I remember to turn the mic on, but I forgot to turn the miner off, so it sounded like crickets back here. What's up, son? This blind rod with Summit Tech once again, and today we're going to have an uncomfortable conversation about NFTs, which stands for non-fungible tokens, as well as if you should be purchasing them and how to be cautious around this new landscape within cryptocurrency. And that's coming from somebody who has been through a previous cycle and sees a lot of similarities to other projects during the cycle between 2016 and 2018 and hopefully you find it helpful but not until we get a word from our sponsor out the following is a paid advertisement prime xbt is an established trading platform that was founded in 2018 and remained in business through the bear market for my personal research there are three main reasons they set themselves apart from other trading platforms high leverage low fees and most importantly privacy Prime XBT requires no user information to start trading. The newest module called Covesting allows users to copy the trading activity of other users. Remember, any form of investing comes with significant risks, so do your own research. Use promo code SONOFATECH at sign up for a 50% bonus. All right, so NFTs, non-fungible tokens, basically the big hubbub around it is that it allows artists to monetize their work digitally and there is obviously a big push behind that because artists have always kind of gotten screwed by the digital landscape there are like for example a lot of options to monetize art as well as music online outside of this but they usually have pretty poor returns in the case of things like spotify or the youtube content id system and so forth the payout is usually pretty weak and it's really not up there with the actual value of the art now when it comes to nfts unfortunately if we're talking about the value of the art my my viewpoint on that is that it's actually worth way more than the art is actually worth as well the other thing that you need to take into account is that just purchasing the nft for that art doesn't mean that you actually own anything physically in most cases while there are some outliers there and we'll get into that primarily you're just buying that that art as a barcode on the ethereum blockchain for example so you want to be very careful now a lot of people say this is all new and this is great and so on but it's also not new we've seen this before with of course crypto kitties back in the day and what happened to crypto kitties when the price of ethereum and the rest of the crypto market bubble popped the price of crypto kitties went down the value of the crypto kitties in relation to fiat as well as even ethereum went down and when that happens you really need to take into account that it's really too closely tied to the value of cryptocurrency to be worth anything in the real world it's not like if you buy something for three hundred dollars with uh, whatever the equivalent of ethereum is and then you, your requirement is to sell that thing through ethereum and then convert that to fiat that your price isn't going to be affected by ethereum so you need to be super careful another thing is like i said you aren't really necessarily getting physical assets in some cases i think there are some artists that have been doing some pretty interesting things with nfts such as sending physical items along with other perks and so on and if that's valuable to you, then that is valuable to you. But I would equate it to buying like a CD or a, an album, right, at this point, where it could go up in value, but most likely you are just buying that for your personal gratification. And if that's the case, then go ahead. But if you're buying it from the perspective of an investment, then I would say, hold your horses, buddy, because your investment now has two points of failure the value of the nft itself along with the value of the cryptocurrency that you bought it on top of whether that be tron ethereum so on and so forth so you need to be super careful also we are at that time in cryptocurrency especially with nfts where there are a lot of scams and whether or not you are able to navigate that 
man, more power to you because I can't navigate that worth of crap. So I can't really talk about individual NFTs and give you an idea of what is good and what is bad. Currently, the cream hasn't risen to the top. Now, do I think that there won't be some cream at the top? No, I think eventually that cream will rise to the top and we'll know what they are. But in, in the case of cryptocurrency, most likely that cream at the top is still not going to be worth the amount that the junk at, that will settle at the bottom is currently worth now. Meaning, if you have like NFT1, which is awesome in the cream, and you have NFT2, which is crap and the junk at the bottom, currently they're both elevated over what they're, the final price of the cream at the top will be worth at the end of the day when everything settles back down. This is nothing new under the sun. We've seen it obviously with the internet bubble. We saw it with the first bubble previously. Like I mentioned, Crypto Kitties as well, which is having a new big uptake. And we've seen it with something called ICOs. Now ICOs are a special case because ICOs also got hit by a lot of regulation. It is possible that NFTs here as they gain more popularity and get put into the press more and more and more, that they get regulated to the point to where a lot of them just shut down or are, I don't know, you can't really confiscate them, but they are regulated to a point or NFT services are regulated to a point to where it's almost impossible for you to buy and sell those cryptocurrencies in your geographical location or those cryptocurrency NFTs. Anyways, you get the idea. Basically, you probably will be looking at a lot of regulation within there coming up soon as it gains more and more popularity. Like I said, once again, we have seen this before with ICOs, which were initial coin offerings. Basically, at that time, what it was was a smart contract with a bunch of tokens that was supposed to be a startup for another cryptocurrency. Now, they would disperse them obviously on Ethereum with the intention of moving to another coin. Well, what happened to a majority of them is they just kind of disappeared into the ether. However, and yes, pun intended. However, the thing is, is some of the cream did rise to the top and they have maintained and been a project even to this day. And that's the cream that I'm talking about. But those ICOs that were successful, that did manage to get past all of the regulation and the bubble popping and so on, aren't necessarily worth what they were or valued at when they first initially dropped that coin, I suppose. So no matter what you do, you need to be very careful in what you're investing in. Another point, just to give you guys an idea, is will that Gucci ghost that you bought for however much, I think it went for a ridiculous amount of money, be worth that if the economy is at a point where people are worried about fulfilling their needs such as food, drink, housing, transportation. It's a lot easier to trade some Ethereum for any of those things or Bitcoin for any of those things then it would be to trade a crypto kitty or a Gucci ghost for one of those things. And with the kind of state that we are in, of course, with the global economy, you want to be very careful with that sort of investment. Obviously, all investments like we talk about, you need to be super careful with. But if it's something that you can't liquidate easy in the case that you need to actually pay your bills, then you need to be extra cautious. Just think of it this way. Is the Gucci Ghost NFT going to be in high demand if nobody can pay their rent? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.